to turn into a Baptist preacher now. <laughs> but again, <laughs> you know where I work. I ain't got the money. <laughs> but again, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. I know the mayor has already uh, presented a, a proposal from the executive branch, but also it's very important that the legislative branch put some things in place also as it relates to the coronavirus. And today, it's very important that we have all the stakeholders uh, here today to help us with this, uh, this situation, this crisis. Uh, it's going to be very important that all hands are on deck to, um, to work through this problem. And I know the federal government has already set down guidelines and also the state. But today, it's going to be very important to address your needs here in the city of Philly to provide opportunities and information for our citizens uh, in Selma and Dallas County. I have also um, written to each radio station uh, in the area asking for a public service announcement. So if you would like to go on the airways and do a public service announcement as it relates to the services that you are providing um, during this crisis here, you may. Also, I'd like to recognize some of my council members here Councilman Jenna Lashore, who represents Ward 6, Councilwoman Janet Thomas, who represents Ward 7, and who's also on the Public Safety Committee, and Councilwoman Youngblood, who's on the Public Safety Committee. Um, Thank you, Councilman Randolph, and also Councilman Randolph, who represents Ward 5. Uh, some of the measurements that the council will be taking during this crisis is to have a soft closure at City Hall. Uh, now, that's going to be up to the mayor. Uh, as with the operational hours, we're looking at you know, uh, talking with the mayor to see what officers will be functional uh, during this time. Also, the council is moving forward with suspensions or rental of all public buildings. All events that we have in our public buildings, we're moving forward with the suspension of all the events. In addition to that, it will be a cancellation of our March 23rd work session and March 24th council meeting. So the next council meeting, along with the work session, will be canceled. Uh, and the council, uh, in addition to that, would appropriate funding for two code enforcement officers. With all the tracks around the city of Selma, it's gonna be very important that we appropriate funding for two part-time code enforcement officers. And in addition to that, we would be doing a contract with someone to clean up all the public buildings. This is here in all the public buildings. And last but not least, like I mentioned to you before, that we would be doing public service announcements on all all of the radio entities, if you have, uh, if you would like to go to the radio station to also disseminate the information. Uh, once again, thank you for coming out. This is going to be a very important meeting to put together a plan to see what we can do. But one of the most important things in um, addressing this is about this information. Because I feel with quality information, you can make a quality decision. And that's what we're here to do today. And again, thank all the stakeholders who are here today. If you would come forward, just give us information, and we can move forward from there. First, we have um, Farm Region of Madison County, uh, Mr. Chase and McCoy, if you please come forward, and also if anyone in the uh, with you, uh, please come forward. Thank you all very much for coming. Just a couple of updates. Uh, I have my, my two uh, expert uh, infection prevention folks. Uh, they've been following this very closely. Following this very closely, they've been in touch with the state and federal CDC. So we're doing everything we can at our facility to make sure we stay current with all the latest information on this. Uh, we have today met and under the federal recommendations of what we're doing, uh, we're going to restrict access to the hospital. 
we will only be able to have people come through the front main entrance or through the emergency room. Once they do come in, uh, we will have a questionnaire following the CDC guidelines as to what their situation is. Do they have a cough? Have they been out uh, exposed to anyone? Do they have a fever? We will limit visitors to the hospital or one visitor per patient at a time. And uh, we'll, they go through the little registration process, they go visit the patient. Uh, when they leave, another patient, another visitor can come and see that patient. But we're not going to allow a bunch of folks to come in and congregate. Uh, we're not going to allow them to be in the hospital. They have to stay outside the hospital. In the emergency room, uh, we'll have the same process going on. Uh, patients that come in that feel like they may have been exposed or they're exhibiting some of the symptoms, uh, we will question them there. And if they meet the CDC criteria, which means they have a fever, uh, they've been possibly exposed or they have been in an area where there is a, a virus um, and they have a shortness of breath, uh, then we'll take further steps on them. Uh, we're not a, a testing site. We don't have any testing sites thus far in uh, Dallas County, uh, the lab core, organization is trying to work that out. Uh, supposedly they will be one day. Right now we have no one testing. Uh, now we uh, are able to collect samples. They collect samples at the health department, uh, various physician offices, and in our hospital. Again, we won't even test or take a sample unless you meet the criteria of what this uh, disease has. Uh, we've got to be very careful that we don't want to make it a crisis, even though it is a crisis. Uh, but right now, uh, we want to make sure if everybody starts coming and running into the hospital, then we're not going to be able to take care of the real sick patients, and that's what we have to do there. Uh, so we're asking people to stay home. If they're concerned and not feeling good, they stay home. Um, social distancing, I think that's the appropriate word now, is what works. Um, fortunately, the virus does have a short lifespan. Uh, so so if, you want, if you feel bad, you stay home. If you don't want to go get caught, uh, catch it and you stay home. Um, but don't just everybody start running out to all the emergency rooms and all the urgent care centers and all the physician offices because that's not going to do any good. We'll be overwhelmed. We do not have facilities to handle that this time. Also, our cafeteria will be closed um, uh, and our uh, gift shop will be closed. We're closing all of our waiting areas because we're just trying to follow the, the federal guidelines to keep congregations from milling around. And, uh, and if they do have it, infected someone else. So, do y'all have anything to add? Good. What are their names? Jennifer, Jennifer Albert. Albert. Jennifer Albert. Albert. Jackie Moultrie. Jackie Moultrie. Have you had any um, contact from the federal government or from the state uh, department of health? Uh, give you any guidance or coordination with what you do locally? Yes, uh, they are sending out almost hourly information. Most of it's pretty set. It's, it's, the only updates we're getting are, are how many people are affected across the country, but all the information is pretty set. We have protocols in place that we deal with infectious disease every day, and the flu has been here for a while. It, well, it's been here about a while, but it's certainly been here this year for a while. So we deal with those things on an ongoing basis. We have protocols in place. Uh, where we uh, you know, have uh, uh, the protection that we, our staff have to, have to wear when they go in and take care of patients, make sure that we're not infecting someone else or catching ourselves. Right now, we want to make sure our staff and our patients are not exposed. And the best way to not be exposed is stay home. Uh, unless you come to a very important meeting like this, then of course you need to be here. But uh, overall, if you feel like you have any of the symptoms, uh, it's not severe for you, then you stay home. But if you do get in a situation where it is severe, then you certainly need to stay home. The president and the vice president did another update maybe about an hour ago, and they rolled out uh, 15 days to halt. And um, they're saying that they're going to try these um, restrictions and approaches every 15 days instead of, instead of um, setting a deadline. Is that yeah, that makes sense. I, 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 was not, I did not get to see that. Uh, that interview, but uh, that does make sense. And I think that's why a lot of buildings and a lot of uh, businesses, schools certainly are being closed uh, for the 14, 15 day cycle just to see how that goes. So would that be the same with the cafeteria? Yes, the yes, yes. We're, we're gonna close until we see what happens. And, and we're, gonna, we're getting guided from, like you said, the feds and the state daily. And right now we're following their guidance.
Yes, sir. They should stay home. Okay. And then do what they normally do. What did you do last year in this type of situation? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that's, you know, and then they'll advise you on what you need to do. Um, but yeah, this is a, that's a routine situation. You're probably used to doing that. I did see one blog that said that uh, the fine uh, pollen will kill it. So we're hoping that's the truth. No, I'm kidding. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't tell you yourself. That, fine, that, that pollen is so thick in the air, you know. <laughs> But thank y'all very much for coming and showing your interest. Uh, the key is just don't panic. Don't everybody freak out. But stay inside if you're not feeling good. Don't risk going out and infecting anyone else, especially the people that are vulnerable, the elderly, the people that do have respiratory issues. You know, just don't get around. Better be safe than sorry. This will pass. But it's in the forever family. We get through this crisis and get back to normal. So thank y'all. Now, I'd heard that uh, the alcohol and bourbon killed them. Is that true? I'm going to test that tonight, yes. Okay, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do mean some bread for that. I, now, I can send, uh, especially on Facebook, and maybe the white people do that, but when I go to my house, I stay up and talk about how much I like. You're addicted, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, I was saying, oh, it's just the flu, no more, no mess. Uh, so X number of people die of the flu every year, and well, that's like saying, you know, so what's the big deal about strokes because so many people die of heart attacks every year? Yeah. You know, it. You know, can you address that? Yes, yeah, so, and we do want to prevent it. Uh, it is a type of flu. Flu is a, is a virus similar to that, um, and but the key is to not let it get out of hand. It is more contagious than the normal flu. Um, and people in certain compromised situations, um, it is more deadly. Um, so we want to just try not to let it spread. And we don't have a team with COVID-19. No. Uh, like okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm an internist here in town. Uh, I'd like to uh, mirror what uh, Mr. McCormick uh, had to say about uh, being wise. If you have a cold, if you have the flu, and you can stay home, let's do it. Okay? Very reasonable question. I got out in the pond, I cleaned out a closet, I got the runny nose, I got a cough. That's not the time to go to the emergency room. Not necessarily the time to come to your physician. <clears throat> this is all new for us all. Okay. Yes, we do have the flu, but we all rec you know, recognize that this year is a little bit different. Some of the insurance companies are doing some things. I really don't want to talk about it a whole lot because I don't know all the details, but I got an update actually while Mr. McCormick was speaking about some great things that various insurance companies are doing to make this a little bit more palatable. Uh, I can say this much, I feel comfortable saying this much, they're going to make it easier for patients to call their doctors and get some advice and get some help. Testing, I think, will shortly be more available. I'd love to tell you when, but I think everybody's real interested in seeing that happen. Okay. Uh, now, to uh, Ms. Youngblood's point, yes, this is a big deal, and we don't want anybody to get it. But for the individual person that's in good health, may well not be the biggest deal, okay? On the other hand, we have a lot of people that we consider very, very valuable that might be at risk. And so us not getting it helps them not get it. So it is worthwhile. So these preventive measures are worthwhile. Now, you'll notice that we're all learning, okay? So I just put my hand on 
microphone that somebody else picked up. Well, we're learning. Okay. And so, <laughs> well, that's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not pointing the blame here. But no, that would have to We do need to be careful. We might need to rethink a few things. I don't know if y'all can see the big bottle of Germax. That's, uh, what, $175 worth of Germax right there? <laughs> <laughs> So in any case, it is worthwhile to rethink a few things. Um, I think the health department and the CDC and so forth, everybody would agree, when you walk in the house, use some Germax, wash your hands. I would argue that washing your hands is better than Germax. But uh, wash your hands, wash your hands uh, as much as you can possibly do it. Uh, if your hands get dry, mine do all the time, that's probably not that good. Uh, uh, Wash your hands as much as you can. If your hands get too dry, use lotion. Okay, but let's do the hand washing. Uh, the the uh, illness is spread by droplets. I think we've all heard that. It's also apparently spread by fomites, which is the medical term for stuff, like <laughs> microphones. Uh, uh, your government, your uh, city council, everybody that I've run into is real interested in seeing how all this goes. I would expect us. Somebody said 15 days. I would expect there to be ongoing things. I have a phone call that I'm going to be involved in with Alabama Department of Public Health later this evening. I would venture to say that there may be some change that comes from that. Okay, I don't know what it might be. If I knew what they were going to say, then they wouldn't need to say it, I guess. Right? <laughs> so, um, um, uh, each, each uh, group of doctors is. Um, is trying to do some things to help people make a good decision about whether or not they come in. Uh, I can't speak to what other officers are doing because I'm only first second hand. We appreciate everybody being patient with us today. We're trying to check temperatures as people walk in the door. Um, and uh, obviously somebody that has a high temperature that raises our levels of concerns uh, and it ought to probably raise other people's levels of concerns. If you have a high fever, <coughs> when we say high fever, we mean 100 um, 99 and a half is perfectly reasonable for somebody that's sitting out in the sun, somebody that's got in the, or hot, feels hot. So a true uh, infectious suggesting uh, temperature. Uh, usually the illness, when it has symptoms, it has a runny nose and cough, muscle aches and pains, it's prototypical. Uh, what's been reported, not that I've seen any of it, but those are the typically reported things. Um, and I would say if you have a question, now we're, we're, we're a hard grouping culture in some way. We, we like to go to work. We don't want to miss work. We don't want to miss uh, church yesterday. We don't want to miss those things. This might be the time to go ahead and miss. Find something good that you can do around the house, something productive, something useful at home, and uh, be patient with ourselves, be patient with our employees, be patient with our employers in working on uh, any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, you have a private practice? Yes, sir. So what happens in a situation where uh, in the waiting room, you know, if you have a lot of patients in the waiting room, are you, is there a way for you to um, enforce uh, the um, social distancing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, um, uh, it's an imperfect system, and we're all working that out. But as it stands right now, uh, I would, I, you know, and again, I can't speak for other but we're making an effort to screen people before they come in. And if they fail a screen, or if they suggest that maybe they have an illness, then we take one test. Only do we bring them into the waiting room if they do not uh, have, uh, uh, if, they, if they don't seem like they failed the screen. Failed is a strong word, but I think I get, get what I mean. Mm. What about if I don't have a thermometer? How do I, what do I We do? have thermometers. But I mean, if I'm at home, <laughs> Uh, yeah. If you well, you know that's a really good question. CDC has answered that. If you think you have a fever, you have a fever. My suggestion would be, okay. My suggestion would be to make an effort to get a thermometer if you if you've got a real concern. Uh, so, but that's perfectly valid. CDC has answered that question. If you think you have a fever, then you have a fever. Now, <clears throat> uh, I don't like that. I think that's probably going to make some people think that they're sick when they're not. But if it makes some people that think they're sick stay at home, I'm kind of for it. Okay. Now. Um, it's uh, a small percentage of people will still need help anyway. They get they get sick. Uh, I would say if you are vomiting, if you are short of breath, uh, if you become dehydrated, if you get into an extreme situation, you may still have some need. 
And I would say call your physician would be a great place to start failing that. There may be some time to seek some help even though you are sick. Uh, probably a better way to say that, but you know, if you're really sick, we really want to help you. Okay, whether you've got the uh, virus or not. Any other questions? Okay, uh, yes ma'am. Right, right. So, uh, you know, there's so many permutations of that. Um, so somebody might have this illness and somebody else might have that illness and, and so forth and so on. <coughs> um, uh, uh, just because somebody has uh, a runny nose doesn't mean that, that they need extreme measures. And I think we've all run into that. We've all had days where we kind of wish we didn't have to go to work and we could stay home. Those folks, please stay home. Somebody that's in an extreme situation, well, it is an extreme situation, okay? And so sometimes it can be hard to tell. And sometimes it can be upsetting to have to deal with that. We don't want you to have to go through that alone, okay? And so the insurances are doing some things to try to make that a little bit easier for us. Uh, I think uh, every physician I know of is really interested in helping folks. Uh, and I know that the hospital is too. And that would be the perfect example of one of those times where it might, might be worthwhile to seek some extra help. Okay. And it'd be nice if you know it could happen during normal business hours too, you know, which is nice, but not an absolute requirement. So, um, in any case, uh, I haven't spent a bunch of time on it today. Um, I've gotten a lot of value out of call, uh, out of looking at the CDC's website, and so let me encourage you to do that. Um, and I've, uh, you know, they have special conditions ones. I've called them a bunch of times. They've been, they've tried to be very, very helpful. Yes, ma'am. Um, Dr. Chair, this is for you and Developed in Massachusetts, and it was shipped to Seattle for a research facility to be tested on okay. on humans. So and that's one of num numerous that are tested on so, animals. So already. Whenever that's out, that's, that's been a pretty good discussion. So, so that's that's not it's not something that's going to be something that we have to determine on the future. No, just in general. Um, uh, when when and if those vaccines become available, they will first be available to those that are at the highest risk and those that have um, the most likelihood of having a serious adult problem. And so if and when those come out, which will not be you know, in the next 15 days. <laughs> I don't think you get pizza that quick. But, um, well, 
in any case. It, 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 that's, that's, that, yeah, that's kind of, a, that's kind of a, a long ways off. So our best strategy at this point is to try to help us make sure that we don't overstretch what our, um, what our health care can provide. And uh, I think our, our health care system has some ability to flex, but we could conceivably, you know, not want to if we could help it. And not, and not, it would be nice if we could avoid that. We know what the economic security is going to be, and we, we are going to be having to be careful. Sure. You know, about putting people in fear on sure. the vehicle, and, and, and you know, you're going to be asking for sure. Sure. Well, I'm asking them myself. And, uh, but, but, and, and so the, the, the reason I can't say it 100% is the person that, that, that uh, passed me message along <coughs> is not in a position of power and control. But he pointed out that, like most vaccines, there's a demand under the supply. So it wouldn't look for us to, you know, right now we've got a, you know, over the next 15 days is a good length of time as any, we've got to buckle down and, and uh, make sure we use our resources. Thank you, Doctor. I'm going to recognize Councilwoman Anthony Benjamin who just walked in. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Chad Durfee, uh, the Edmund Knight Mission CEO, President, Mr. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> give you a couple of brief updates uh, what's going on in the mission. First of all, we are open for business. Um, we are not closed. Uh, some general comments uh, that I really want to make. Uh, unfortunately, I'm glad that uh, the Facebook is running, Sam, because a lot of the folks that, that we deal with at least have access to that and should be hearing this information. So I'm, I'm thankful that at least it's getting out somewhere. Um, unfortunately, in the room, we don't have those that are most highly affected by what is I guess uh, is a matter of time, uh, and certainly um, to hit here in Dallas County and Selma, uh, the, the poor. Uh, and so there are some efforts being made by, I believe, and I suppose Aubrey will probably speak about it, by the utility companies and the water companies uh, suspending payments. Uh, and although some might find this to be a quick benefit, it is absolutely not a benefit uh, for those uh, poor to do and avail themselves of, of that. Um, I would ask that if there is a client or someone out there that does have a disconnect notice, do not ignore it. Uh, come to the missions as you normally would uh, to try to get you back on track. Uh, if in fact you let these bills pile up until June 1st, you're gonna be that much deeper in the hole and then your disconnect's gonna come in the heat of the summer. Uh, so I think that it's interesting that this is happening now because it raises a very real problem 12 months out of the year for the poor. Sanitation, heat, cooling, the whole again. So I think this is a great opportunity for us as a city to look about what are the long-term solutions to these problems, not just during a, a crisis situation. So I think there is a lot more to be done here. I would ask those that can not get behind on their bills. If you come to the mission, for assistance, continue to come. Let us work with Alabama Power. Let us work with the gas company. Let us work with the uh, water company. Do not let these disconnect notices go unheeded. It is not an extra $30 uh, where you're making decisions I know already about medication or even getting your nails done or your hair did or whatever it may be. Um, do not take that extra money and believe that it's free money because come June 1st, there's going to be a severe problem. And I can tell you if you wait, the missions will run out of money and will not be able to assist everyone. So fair warning, get in line now, stay up with your bills, stay up with what you need to do, be responsible. Um, we learned today that most people, if they hit a $400 crisis in their life, they would go bankrupt today. Most of our folks do not even have that. They're living on $11,000 a year. So we have some serious problems here but important problems that I think um, as a city we need to address when this is over. 
and figure out how are we going to deal with not just a crisis situation where we come together, but talk about the state of our city and poverty and how we're going to deal with the folks that are in need 12 months, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. So that's, that's on that. So please, send folks to us. Do not let them get behind on their bills. It's not extra money in their pocket. You know, the payment is going to come for the money. Uh, come June 1st or June 15th or whatever your pay date is in June when all of this expires and the, the urgency of what's going on fades into the distance. So Catholic Social Ministries is open, 8.30 to 4.30. Um, if anybody wants to come in, we are practicing safe practices, so only three clients at a time will be allowed in the waiting room and then vetted through. Our Bosco operation is open, 20, uh, is open uh, seven days a week as has been practiced. Uh, we are also beginning our breakfast bags uh, tomorrow uh, from 8 to 9.30. Um, and anyone that needs a breakfast can have one through spring break and into the future. Um, it'll be simple, cereal, granola bars, juice, milk, whatever the case may be, fruit. Um, but that'll be available from 8 to 9.30 at Bosco. Lunch will be served and dinner will be served. Uh, as it is now, if you have no place to go, um, you can come in and get your food and sit down for at a table, uh, moving folks in and out. You can also get a plate to go. Uh, so for those folks that are homeless or don't have homes, they can at least sit down and eat in a dignified space. Those that have a home can get their plates and take them uh, as they see fit. Our Meals of Hope program, so we, we serve about a thousand of those a day, folks. So it's not a small number coming in and going out. Uh, we deliver 310 in-home meals called Meals of Hope. Uh, so we will be doing wellness checks on those 310 folks that we deal with on a daily basis to make sure that uh, they are well, uh, they will have their food, and we will ensure that if they're taking their medication, just reinforce uh, that they're taking their medication and, again, using uh, sanitizing agents uh, if they, if they um, just as a reminder, before they eat, to wash their vegetables, whatever the case may be, but to wash their hands. Um, the Bosco, the community center is delayed opening until the middle of April, uh, just out of, out of caution. Um, the YMCA's are closing uh, very quickly, and so we figured why infect a brand new space? So we're gonna keep that closed until uh, mid-May. Our after-school programs have shuttered um, until uh, the beginning of April. Uh, we determined when we start those back up, uh, again, just following along with some of the school school guidelines and when and, when and if it hits Dallas County. Um, as far as I know, and I don't know if the county uh, uh, health knows, do we have any confirmed cases in Dallas County yet? So, so we're, still, we're still keeping it at bay. Maybe that's our prayer. Um, but um, so I don't know. Is there anything else, Joe? Yeah, the programming is canceled, but the feeding programs and the Catholic Social Ministries, the aid and uh, utility assistance and that is still on track. And like I said, the food is available. So now we'll have breakfast, lunch, and dinner um, instead of just uh, lunch and dinner. And yes? Uh, yes. 
All of our stuff's kind of on Facebook. Uh, in the night mission. So, um, um, on Facebook. Okay, and what about the, the breakfast yes. for, um, for kids who are in the school? I understand Montgomery is beginning to, to provide breakfast mm -hmm. for some of the school kids. Are you, are you set up to handle um, kids that would normally be in school? That, that's school? what it's for. In fact, what we've decided to do, because we realize some parents will probably not be able to go to school or go to work, um, that we will, it, it, like I said, it'll be a very simple breakfast, a grab and go. Um, uh, like I said, cereal with milk or a piece of fruit, something, uh, basically to get them to lunchtime when we open at 11.30. Um, so it's just, in, so anybody that, that needs a breakfast bag can come and get a breakfast bag. We're not restricting it. Um, and we're starting tomorrow, even though um, folks were wondering if we would be doing it because it's uh, spring break. And so the schools typically wouldn't be offering anything during a spring break. And so we, we're starting ours tomorrow and we'll be going for the foreseeable future. And lastly, I know you talked about the um, social distancing. Mm -hmm. Is that going to slow down like if there's a line? You know what I mean? Are you going to create a line if necessary? Sure, yes. And what we have found already is that many folks are coming in and getting uh, a meal for them and their mother or grandmother or whatever. So folks are actually already beginning the process of taking those meals out and taking them home. So at this point, at lunchtime, it was very, very seamless. But we're offering a space for those that don't have a home. At least they can, they can be there in their space. Well, while I'm up here, <laughs> anybody else, any other questions? <laughs> Corey, hurry. <laughs> They're just staring at me now. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Next, we have uh, oh, Mr. Harvey Carter right. and Mr. Wayne Bartman. <laughs> My call and next to Ms. Sarah Smith. I guess he's trying to get all the lines. This man keeps the lights on. He does. <laughs> it's folks better than me that actually keeps the lights on. I ain't never going to see you. Uh, um, uh, Corey, thank you for the invitation today. Uh, thank you all for coming out. Uh, my name is Aubrey Carter. I'm with Alabama Power. And just wanted to give you a, a, a few updates on kind of where, where, where we are. Uh, we've been actively monitoring uh, COVID 19 virus, and we've implemented plans to make sure that we ensure continuity of services uh, while keeping our employees safe. And, 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 and keeping service to the general public. Uh, like many of the businesses you've heard probably on the news, we are practicing uh, uh, social distancing because some of our folks are, are, are working from home and, and in alternate locations, but they stand ready to get the lights back on if, 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 if needs be. Uh, 